blast across the entire scene and how much protection will the island give me. So I waited and um, it quickly became apparent that the trees immediately in front of me, which are on the school side, were catching, the tops of them were catching fire. And then I was t uh, turning around looking over towards the Red Hill side, um, towards the river side, the trees were beginning to catch the tops of them there too. So I thought, right, it's about to surround me. It's going to surround, surround me, which it proceeded to do. Um, a very uh, difficult moment because it's so surreal. I mean, you find yourself thinking, this isn't happening, is it? This is, this is not real. Um, and there was even... Uh, there was even a moment there where I, I, I was literally looking for a remote control. You know, I just wanted to change the channel as this thing kept getting bigger. I kept thinking, I want to get away from this, I don't like this. And uh, I questioned myself about a few things, you know, was I panicking, was I in terror? And I thought, well, if I just stay still, we'll have to deal with it minute by minute. Um, and in front of me then I noticed little fingers of orange flame were sort of creeping through the grass. It was quite bizarre. It almost looked like an animation. Hmm. And at and some point did the island that you were sheltering behind itself catch fire? Yes. The, well, the, I, thought the it would. On the I thought it would at some stage and that it would have to. And I stayed there as long as I could, which was a, a considerable period of time, I would think, perhaps about 20 minutes sheltering there, maybe 30. Um, and then I looked up and saw that the trees and the island, the tops of those were catching fire. So I thought, all right, it's time to move away from here because I still wasn't sure what was going out, uh, uh, what was happening on the other side of the island. Like what state was the mountain is? Was there a fireball on the other side? What, and I know, didn't, it didn't even occur to me to put, stick my head out to have a look. And I rather wish I had now because I'd like to have seen how intense it was, but I, I thought if it was intense enough and the wind was intense enough that it might actually sweep around both sides of the island and my very point of um, protection would be the worst place I could be. I thought that's going to be uh, right in the path of significant heat and, and flame. So it then became necessary to move away from the island and swim further out into the middle of the lake. And when you were in the middle of the lake, did you find some shelter for your head? Well, that was... Um, that's where I call my lake just a little miracle, actually. It, I've always thought it was a magic place, but just as I made the decision to move out to the centre of the lake, I thought I'm going to need some protection because there was a lot of, a lot of embers, not the final ember shower that came down, but um, the uh, smoke above me had descended and was sitting almost above my head, perhaps at about the level of this ceiling, and it was sort of, if I can use the expression, frothing and bubbling. It almost looked like tar. It was black and very, very dense and um, quite terrifying because it just got darker and darker. And um, I had to, the island was on fire, and I thought, well, I've got to move. I literally, I can't get over this, I put my hand out and there was the perfect branch in the shape of an umbrella, already wet, just at my arm's length. I don't know how that happened, but I thanked whatever power had put it there, um, and took that and used that as an umbrella and mm -hmm. swam out to the, the centre. Um, but I was waiting for what I felt was the real firestorm. I don't know how it was happening all over the rest of town, but over the lake, it was very dense and very powerful and it had the sense of as though it was drawing breath, you know, and I'm about to to let go and then it did. And it was did. the, the and, entire and sky just seemed to catch fire and then it absolutely rained uh, embers, just a massive meteor shower of, of embers. And very thankfully, of course, I had my branch and... Um, there was hissing going on all around me, and I and paddled time, out from there. From time to time, uh, did, did you immerse yourself in the water? And, and yes, I had to several happening. times. It got very dense, and the air got very hot. Um, I was very parched, and I was constantly sort of sipping water off the surface of the lake, and um, 
taking in air, but uh, at various times the ember shower was, was so thick um, that it, it was necessary to go under the water. I've never been worried about water. I love water. It's e easy for me to be in, so and I was quite happy to just submerge myself for the periods of time. Very curious being under the water, looking up through this um, murky green to see all this sort of blurred mass of orange hitting and of course every time you'd put your head up you'd hear the hissing going on and the hissing in the, in the foliage above my head. Um, yes, I did that several times, perhaps the longest of those was about, I suppose, about 20 seconds I stayed under. And at some point while you were out there in the middle of the lake, did you become aware that the school was on fire? Yes. Um, Yes, I could see plainly that the school was on fire. There were quite massive flames leaping up and around at that point. Everything seemed to be on fire at that point. Um, it just seemed to be a, a wall of flame, particularly on the riverside. It was a wall of flame. Watching the trees was just extraordinary because, if I can use my hands to demonstrate, they all the trunks seemed to be moving in different directions as though they had their own currents and at times there were complete spirals of flame winding up into the tops of them, some of which surprisingly were blue, these fabulous blue flames, and it was just absolutely surreal, just hard, hard even to, um, hard to believe any of that was happening.